It's been three weeks, but we have some big news to talk about today. There's some new filming information that may tell us a bit about the plot for season two. We've got an interesting interview with Alexandra Willem, the actor that plays Tom Marilyn. Some more news on the visual effects from season one and some of the thought that went into the creation of Tar Valon. We've also got a couple interviews from cast members, including Daniel Henney, that are pretty telling. And then the main news that may shock some people, the possibility that Rafe Judkins may be leaving the production. We'll have all of that and some more community news, the winner of the contest from like three weeks ago, and I'll be announcing a new one this week with new prizes. All of that and more on this week's weekly Wheel of Time news. So today's video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow with no major spoilers of any kind, but I will be mentioning a few things that might be considered minor spoilers, but I think you're good to watch no matter what, but just a warning there anyway. So the first piece of news is I apologize for this and the way I sound. I have, my allergies have been hitting me like a ton of bricks. So sorry, you got to deal with it, but it is what it is. First piece of news here. So Sarah from whatseries.com announced on the Dark Friend Social two weeks ago, which is my live show, that there have been some developments in regards to the Wheel of Time production in Morocco. Now, a couple weeks back, I mentioned that the main filming had wrapped in Prague and that there was going to be some short filming taking place in Morocco, and we speculated that that might be the IO waste given that Morocco is mostly desert. Well, it turns out, according to Sarah from Watt Series, that there will be quite a bit more being filmed there than we previously thought. The production is going to be filming in Morocco for another two months, with two separate directors helming the project while there. Now the filming in Morocco part was known, but the filming for two months part is what is interesting here. Two months of filming and two separate directors means quite a bit of time dedicated to these scenes, and it indicates that whatever this setting is, it's gonna be a place that we're gonna stay a while in the show. So two weeks ago, I gave my impression that I thought this would be the IO Waste. Now that we have this information, I think it's possible that the IO Waste could be part of this filming, but I'm convinced that it's something else as well. Unless the IO plotline has been massively accelerated, it's unlikely we'll be spending much time there. I am at this point starting to lean towards this being the area that Falm is filmed. Now I have a couple of reasons for that. First of all, Morocco isn't only desert, it's also a coastline and we know that Falma is on the coast. Additionally, it feels very similar to the scene where the little girl at the end of season one was hit by a wave. That's also a location that I could see them filming in for extended periods of time, and it matches up with the leaked season two synopsis that came out around a month ago. And although that synopsis isn't confirmed, this would seem to match up a bit if indeed the Morocco scenes were foam. Let me know what you think in the comments of the video. Is that what this is? So a few weeks back, a podcast called Binge Town TV did an interview with Alexandra Willem, the actor that plays Tom Marilyn in The Wheel of Time. Now the interview was not completely about The Wheel of Time, but there was a segment that was, and they were kind enough to post that clip on their YouTube channel. Now the interview is actually really funny and Alexandra Willem sure gives a very raw interview. He doesn't seem to hold much back about his thoughts, which I really appreciated, but I'm not gonna play any clips here or summarize the entire thing, primarily because I want you to go give them the clicks and views. So I've got that clip listed in the description of this video. But the interview primarily covers the changes between the character in the books and the way Willem played him on the show and what the genesis of some of those changes were. I, for one, was a fan of the way Tom was portrayed in the show. And although he was different, I really enjoyed his scenes and wished we got more of them. He is for sure a grittier take on the character, but that was deliberate according to this interview. They also discussed changes like the playing of the guitar, the mustache, the age of the character. I highly suggest checking out the interview clip it's only a few minutes long, so it's certainly worth a watch. So over the past few months since the show ended, various articles have been coming out explaining the thinking and execution behind the visual effects in Wheel of Time's first season. I find these really fascinating as they explain the world building and the choices that they made while making the show. That always helps me understand an adaptation better. Now there's a new article out about the Wheel of Time visual effects, and it's this time it's about the city of Tarvalon. Now I'll have that article linked in the description of the video, but I found this one especially interesting because I enjoy making maps about the series. The article addresses some of the choices they needed to make when creating the city from scratch, and the level of detail that they thought of is actually pretty remarkable to me. They even made sure they had enough buildings to house 600,000 people, which is the population of the city in the show. 
Now, some notable things to come from the article were that they had to be careful to not make the city feel too white because it wouldn't feel real if it was. They actually showed a picture of the city with no darkening of any of the buildings, and it is really, really white, so that was a good call. They also created about 20 different buildings to build the city with, and then they used those variations as they built the entire city. Now, the roads were designed in a very specific pattern that leads to the center of the city, and they built the city on tiers rather than keeping it flat, as it didn't look right and the White Tower wasn't prominent enough. This is actually something I mentioned before when making maps of the city. The White Tower is described to be only about 600 feet tall in the books, and the island is nine miles long in the books. The White Tower wouldn't tower over the entire city, it would be tall, but it wouldn't be as dominant in the skyline as the pictures that we see and the artist conceptions would make it look based on those dimensions for the city. So when crafting the city for the show, they put the tower on the top of a hill in the middle of the city, which increased its profile. It makes it look really large. I think it's a really good move as it emphasizes the White Tower's importance in Tarvalon, and it makes it very, very prominent. You can't miss it. But make sure to check out that article. There are some other cool pre-render visuals in there as well that I think give a little bit more explanation that I also think are very interesting. So check that out. So just this past week, we got a few snippets about Wheel of Time Season 2 from some cast interviews. Now first, let's take a look at this interview with Natasha O'Keefe. Now if you aren't aware, Natasha O'Keefe is an actress playing somebody in season two that Rafe said will have a large impact on the show going forward, but we are not sure who that is. Many have speculated that she is playing Lanfear, but my money is on Elida. In any case, there is a short clip snippet from her interview where she says that she is currently working on a project called The Wheel of Time for Amazon, and that it is very different from her main role on Peaky Blinders. She also casually drops that it should come out some point next year, meaning 2023. So the main thing to unpack here obviously is the release date. Now, first of all, I wanna say that just like when Priyanka said mid 2022 for a release, I don't think any of the actors in the show have any clue when the show is being released. I think that is an Amazon decision and I doubt they have publicly told anybody that. Second though, I think she's probably right. So at this point, the rumor is, is that the end of Q1 2023, and I think that's probably likely. As long as they have time to finish filming the show properly, they get to do the right post-production work, I'm going to be happy. Most of my issues from season one can be chalked up to a rushed release, seemingly at least, and then cutting the show too short with the number of episodes and the length of the pilot. If they have more time, I think we're going to get a far more polished, finished product. The other interview was with Landman Dragger and actor Daniel Henney. He was asked what we can look forward to in season two for Lan, and this is how he answered. Lan and Moraine will be tested, individually and as a warder Aes Sedai unit. They'll face challenges that have huge implications. I consider season two a journey season for Lan. He will be faced with many moments and situations that force him to question everything he's believed in and how he's lived his life up to this point. It's really hard for me not to give too much away, but I will say this. Two swords multiple fades, blood, lots of blood. So there's a lot there to break down, some of which we can only really guess at, but let's start with the questioning everything that he's believed in piece. To me, this is a conflict at his core of believing in Moraine and following her absolutely, or being torn away for his love for Nynaeve. Let me know if you have a different take on that, but I feel like that's really the core of what he has believed in, was following Moraine in her quest, and now he believes in loving Nynaeve. I think ultimately he will choose Moraine, at least at this point in the story, but I think that will be part of the tension. That's my take on it. Let me know if you have a different take of that in the comments of the video. Now, in terms of the swords, fades, and lots and lots of blood, it's really hard to speculate here because Lan's storyline in the second book Let's just say without getting into spoilers, uh, it doesn't include many of those things. So they are clearly creating some storylines for him and Maureen this season, as they should. Let me know in the comments of the video what you think those might be. So before we move on to the big news about Rafe, let me thank the video's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a subscription box service that sends you out a lot of cool shit every single month for one low fee. It's awesome stuff. They send you new stuff out every single month. I've been a subscriber for them for a long time now. I've gotten a lot of really cool things. This month, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox my newest package from them. Basically what this is, is a sleep kit. So they sent me this red light bulb that you put on in your room. And it actually is said that the red light actually counteracts the blue from like your phone and computers. And it helps you go to sleep. Even your skin absorbing it can help. So I've got that. 
I've got melatonin gummies that they sent me a bunch of packs of. And then we've got this magnesium sleep oil called Nocturne, which is really cool looking. And then lastly, we've got a sleep mask, which I cannot wait to try. How do I look? So some other boxes I've gotten from them in the past have included knives, cooking equipment, alcohol stuff for my bar, all the fun stuff. Check out their website. You can actually find a link to it in the description of this video. You'll get a big discount on the service. You also help the channel out by clicking on that link and signing up for Bespoke Post. You will love it. But let's get back to the news. All right, so let's hit the big news that has some people freaking out a little bit. There was an article that Deadline published discussing a new rights acquisition by Amazon as they have purchased the rights to the God of War franchise, the popular video game series. They want to make a live action adaptation of the series, and those that are reportedly spearheading the creation of the series are Expanse creators and executive producers Mark Fergus and Hawk Otsby, and then our very own Rafe Judkins. This, of course, has prompted a lot of rumors that Rafe was leaving the Wheel of Time or being pushed out, etc. And I hate to kill the drama so fast, but I would pump the brakes on all of that. I don't think Rafe is going anywhere, and I don't think an announcement like this should be any reason for alarm. First of all, this doesn't say what capacity Rafe will have with the new project, and there are not likely to be three to four showrunners. If I had to guess by reading into this, he would maybe have an executive producer role, but he wouldn't be managing the day-to-day -day production of the series. Having your name attached to multiple projects is not realistic or uncommon in the industry. I also doubt that Rafe would jump ship right after he was the primary reason for the Wheel of Time being greenlit in the first place. This was a dream project for him, and I can confirm that he is a major Wheel of Time fan, and he wants to make sure it gets done right. I would add that if for some reason Rave Judkins did leave the Wheel of Time, it would likely not be for a few years if they've not even finished the contracts for how they're going to make this series, let alone starting production. Either way, how do you read into this story? Do you see it as saying that Rafe is leaving, or do you read it as he just maybe attaching his name to another project? Let me know in the comments of the video. So in some community news, the innkeeper, despite moving houses, has been working hard with Taylor to produce something pretty darn cool. They have been putting together their own cut of the Wheel of Time first season. Now they released a very short clip on their YouTube channel, which I'll have linked in the description of the video, and you can see a bit of their work. It's really, really good. It's very similar to what they did previously with the dusty wheel cut of the Winter Dragon, which was the original Wheel of Time pilot that had Billy Zane in it from a while back. Make sure you go check that out and support them in this. Another thing going on right now involving the Dusty Wheel is the Wheel of Time Song Parody Challenge. This is an amazing community event run by the Dusty Wheel, John from What Up, and Unraveling the Pattern. Now this is the second annual event, and legit last year when this happened, this was one of my favorite community events that the Wheel of Time community has ever done. There are prizes for the winners, so make sure you get your entry in. So many of these are so good, they're really fun to see. Make sure you join and submit your entry. You have until March 31st to submit it. I'll have the link in the description of this video with the rules. Let me play you a quick clip from one from last year. Now this is the story of the Dragon Reborn. A blacksmith, a wisdom, a dude with a horn. You got your dreamer, a gleaman, a warder, I said I, and a bunch of other people couldn't name him if I tried. From Hicksville, Manetha, and these kids were plucked. So if you stick around here, your whole town is fucked. We can't wait another minute, gotta leave before the dawn. So they headed out for safety in the halls of Carvalon. But they split up the party on a cold day road all night. Then met up again in Camelon and detoured into the blight. They got in one little fight with some evil dudes. Who totally killed the green man, which was super rude. Now, the gambler's got a dagger, and the dreamer has been leashed, and the wisdom's got a temper, but to the warder, she's a treat. And the Aes Sedai is stressed, because these kids all act like fools, but the has got them dancing, so they're breaking all the rules. Now, they're off to save the world, but they really have no clue about the way anything works, and what the hell they're supposed to do, but every challenge they will counter, every mountain they will climb, and I've barely scratched the surface of the Wheel of Time. See how awesome that was? Make sure you get yours in. I can't wait to watch all of these and have fun with everybody again. Click the link in the description of the video to find out how to enter and learn the rules. Now, if you have not noticed, there have been a number of new writers on thegreatblight.com. 
and I'm really excited about them. Both Rational Nerd and Bane and Chiad have been writing regular articles, and they are all worth checking out. Bane and Chiad writes regular top 10 style lists about the Wheel of Time show and books, and they're a lot of fun. Those articles release on Tuesdays. Rational Nerd is writing a column called Data What Data, which examines data from the show and the books and breaks it all down. It's really interesting. Those articles release on Thursdays. Make sure you read and share them around on Facebook groups and Twitter and all of that. We appreciate it. And all right, since we've been off the last two weeks, I still have not announced the winner to the contest like two weeks ago. So the contest was to quote tweet the tweet that I announced the video with, if that makes sense. And the winner's going to get a t-shirt of your choice from shopwheeloftime.com. So let me go ahead and announce that winner before I announce the new contest. Two weeks ago's winner was... Denise Malonas. Uh, Denise, shoot me a message on Twitter or on Discord, and I'll get your info, and I'll get you out your shirt. But let's move on to this week's contest, though. This week's contest is to win another t-shirt of your choice from shopwheelofTime.com, which is my merch store. Here's how you enter. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Those things are always musts to be eligible. Then I want you to leave a comment on the video letting me know which character you want me to do a deep dive on next. I want to keep the lore videos coming, so help me decide who gets the deep dive treatment next video. So again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then leave a comment on the video letting me know which character you would like me to do a deep dive on. Special thank you again to my patrons. You can see my top tier patrons up on the screen right now. You make all of this possible. Please consider supporting the channel, especially if you like the content right now, as ad revenue has dropped quite a bit for Wheel of Time related content. Also check out one of these videos here that you might like. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.